Hello everyone, I can see some of my friends are joining in. Thank you. We'll just wait a few minutes, or a few seconds I should say, not a few minutes. Uh, um, I think the Instagram is still telling people to join my video. So we'll just wait for a second, we just increase the volume. Thank you for joining us tonight. We'll just wait for a few seconds till Natalie uh, will get the notice and she will uh, join us just in a few seconds and we will start our exciting conversation and uh, I'm looking forward to see her. She's traveling right now so I'm very grateful for her to be able to take a little bit of time from your holidays actually to join us all tonight. Somebody's asking, yes, this is my usual drink when I do the conversations, just kind of a routine. I'm very much of a routine and traditions person. Just hope that um, we are not uh, stuck somewhere. In case um, there will be a little bit of a hurdle, I might disconnect and connect again. Just whoever is watching uh, uh, to know. Hello. Let's see. Sometimes technology plays a little tricks quite often happens with me. Just wait for a few more seconds and I might uh, disconnect to connect to you all again just in a few. Oh, well, here you go, Natalie is here. I will invite her now. Request. Looking forward to see her. Hi, Natalie. Hello, Olga. Hi. How are you? You look beautiful. Thank you. So do you. Finally, nice to put a uh, yeah, face to the name. Exactly. Well, I've seen your beautiful exactly. photos. But you look just as radiant in the video as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. So do you. And thank you so much, Natalie, for taking your time. I know that you are... Can you hear me well? How is, is the connection okay? I think so. I hope so. I'm actually thinking of putting on my headphones so I can hear you better. Um, but I think Whatever it's... Whatever the It's a little bit... Dis there is a little bit of a disturbance, but uh, uh, let's, let's try it. Okay, let's do it. Well, after all, you are in, probably in the countryside and you, are, you told me that you're in Bordeaux right now. And uh, uh... Yeah, I'm in the city. I'm, I'm here in the city of Bordeaux. So it should be okay. Oh, okay. I can hear you actually much better now. So is everyone okay. else? Perfect. Oh, Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello to all of the audience who's tuning in today. Yes, we are very happy to see you. So I will say just a little bit of a logistics. I will say a little bit, a few words about uh, conversations with Olga. I will do the introduction for you. And then we'll continue with our conversation. Let's do it. Okay, okay fantastic. Well, hello, everyone. Good evening, Asia. Good evening, Singapore and Thailand. And uh, I know we have a lot of followers because, of course, you, Natalia, from Thailand. And uh, Good morning, America, and good afternoon, Europe. Uh, I'm Olga, and uh, you might have already seen uh, some of my IGTV or, or YouTube series that I've started called Conversations with Olga, uh, where I introduce my friends and personalities I've met through my career, 
uh, to the multicultural Singaporean and global community through a platform that is accessible and interesting, especially during this time. These conversations run a gamut of from intellectual and cultural exchanges to more of a personal conversations about how people fulfill their dreams and what they have learned over the past year, especially. My main mission for uh, the conversations with Olga and Hope, actually, for the series is to inspire and cultivate a more diverse and inclusive community. So tonight, I'm excited to introduce my guest for the episode number 22, Natalie Glibova, an author and a former Miss Universe. Um, I will say a few words about Natalie, and uh, we'll continue with the questions and the just, a, just a conversation. Natalie is intensely focused on empowerment, coaching, and gender equality activism for the past decade, and passionate about encouraging young people to build their self-confidence and reach their biggest goals and biggest potentials. Natalie has also been actively involved in charity work ever since she moved to Thailand in 2006 and was a spokesperson for worldwide and local organizations such as Habitat for Humanity, Operation Smile, which I supported as well for very much, uh, SOI Dog Foundation, UNDP, WWF, and Freeland. She has written two best-selling books, Healthy, Happy, Beautiful, and I Am Winning, A Guide to Personal Empowerment. Her public seminars and group empowerment coaching courses are centered around having the habits and mindset that will make you a winner in life. Ah, welcome, Natalie, once Thank again. You. Please, Thank you. Thank you. We have a lot in common, actually, with regards to our background. We As do. We left the former Soviet Union with our parents, and with my mother only, uh, when we were teens. Mm. This How old were life. you? Uh, I was uh, 14 and a half. Yes, about the yes. same. I was 13. Yes, yes exactly. Uh, the drastic change of life for me, and I'm sure for you and your parents, was a learning path and character building journey that taught us how to be resilient, not to be afraid to embrace the unknown, and in a sense, how to hustle a little bit. Uh, as a child, you studied classical piano and completed the rhythmic gymnastics. These are actually uh, similar disciplines that have been almost the prerequisites for all of us growing at that time in Russia, as the former Soviet Union. And yes, so your, you and your family uh, left Russia and settled in Toronto, Ontario, Canada when you were 13. Mm -hmm. After graduating from high school, you worked as a professional model in Toronto and received a Bachelor of Commerce in Information Technology Management and Marketing and worked as a motivational speaker for elementary and high school students prior to competing in pageantry. You have always been interested uh, in motivational speaking and empowerment, in the empowerment of others. Why? What inspired you to help others? Why? Mm, I always feel like it's a, it's a nice uh, kind of full circle, right? Whenever you experience something, whenever you learn something, whenever you go through a period of growth or transformation, it's a nice way to come full circle and kind of wrap it all up by passing on the knowledge, the information, the inspiration or empowerment to others. And isn't it always like that in life that, you know, the circle of life keeps going on and on. We get inspired by people and in turn, those people will inspire other people, right? Yeah, so absolutely. I think it's, it's, it's an, like paying forward in a little in a bit. Exactly, exactly. And I really believe in this whole energy exchange when it comes to learning something and then passing on, on that knowledge to somebody yeah. else. Otherwise, you really are just holding on to that energy and then you are not... Uh, participating in yeah you're not yeah. participating in that flow in that exchange yeah. of energy that that is supposed to be happening all over the world and in the universe um, with everything around us right so I really always loved everything motivational in fact when I was a kid I started reading books like chicken soup for the teenage soul by Jack Canfield you know and then I yeah. started getting into things like the Celestine prophecy you know a little bit spiritual so as I was on my own journey of personal development and self-discovery and, and spiritual growth, I felt that it is my duty 
to continue to pass on this knowledge yeah. and this experiences that I have gained to others. And Fantastic. of course, it's, I'm, I always inspire and encourage other of my students, all of my students to pass on what they learned from me to others. So it Absolutely. just has to keep rolling over. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, it's, in, it's embedded in your DNA, I should say. Well, I, I watched your very, very cute uh, animated life story. Uh, it was very well done. It's very well done. And you tell us that you were inspired by Oksana Fyodorova, who was Miss Universe in 2002 yes. prior to signing up for the pageant, isn't it? Yes. What did you see in her that reflected in you? Yeah, it's like, as I was saying, you know, I was inspired by a Russian woman who at that time won such a prestigious contest. And it's so interesting to me now to hear girls who are starting to compete in pageants who tell me they watched me competing on stage and that was their impetus for going into pageants. So again, you see how the circle of life and coming full circle yes. is just, it's everywhere. Yes. And yes. so what I saw in Oksana was basically what I had wanted to look at Russian women and at myself, and I wanted to see that image of somebody who is strong, empowered, confident, absolutely yes. beautiful from the inside out, well-spoken. And when I saw her competing, I had no doubt in my mind that she's going to win. So it was one of those moments where I just laid my eyes on Oksana and I said, oh, this woman is going to win for sure. I had no doubt in my mind. And it was the case. She really yes. did win. You visualize it. Yeah. And so when I, when I saw that something inside me, I guess I saw part of myself in her, right? Because I don't know about you, Olga, but when you first came to, you went to the U.S. To first? New York. To, to New, New York. York. Yeah. So it's probably very similar, our, yes. our teenage years. But did you get bullied or maybe made fun of a little bit for being a Russian immigrant? <laughs> uh, yes, of course. But that's why I said that we all learned how to hustle and we kind of, we had no choice, didn't we? We had to succeed. Right. We had to prove ourselves, first of all, to ourselves. And uh, right. uh, we didn't take no for an answer and we just moved on. So the bullying uh, plus, uh, you know, I, I come from a Soviet Union where I was bullied for being Jewish uh, mm. all my life, throughout my childhood. Yeah. So I kind of uh, was pretty much seasoned, even when I was a teenager coming to, to New York. Well, uh, every teenager has to put up with some sort of bullying yes. or some sort yes. of teasing. But for yes. me, the main issue was my own self-image. Because when I came to Canada and having that image of an immigrant, specifically from Russia at that time, it was sort of a very negative image that people had yeah. of Russia and yes, of definitely. immigrants from Russia. And so I internalized a lot of the things that I had heard at that time from my peers yes. and from even adults who would say, oh, Russia, oh, gosh, aren't you guys all drunk communists? Yes. <laughs> you know, I things know like you that. Yes. Right. So for me to see that image of a Russian woman who is standing on stage so confident, so beautiful, and winning a prestigious Yes. international title it was sort of like that proof to me right that oh yes. we're not just the stereotype that yes. most people exactly. think of us as exactly. russians the stereotype is the right word right we can be yes. a miss universe we can yes. be anybody right so, so when i saw Oksana Fodora, it just inspired me that i i could be some somebody like that too yes. absolutely and talking about miss universe in particular what about the Miss Universe title that made you so motivated to work for? Mm. I think oh, at first, the whole idea of being on stage really drew my attention because as a child and as a teenager, I loved being on stage. I think I got bitten by the performer's bug early on when I was performing little dance shows in high school and signing up to all of these extracurricular activities where we had to perform in a band or something like that. And so I love the adrenaline rush of being on stage. And so yeah. when I was in university, I didn't see too many opportunities for myself to go um, you know, into theater. I was not really an actress. I was not really a singer. I was not a performer of any kind. But I loved dancing. I loved show, like showmanship, you know, yeah. when you can prepare and rehearse 
an opening number. So it and seems then, like you've been an extroverted person since you were a child. No, funny enough, I'm actually an introvert. But, yes, I. <laughs> but I love that aspect of getting ready, putting the makeup yes. on, getting the costume, uh, yes. rehearsing for a show, yes. and then going out there and performing for the audience. Yes. I just love that feeling. And so when I saw this opportunity come up um, after watching Oksana, I researched how can I get into this pageant. Yes. And I saw that in Canada, they have a local division for Miss Universe Canada. Yes. I thought, well, this is my chance. I guess yes. this is what drew me to the yes. pageants in the first place, just that showmanship aspect. That actually brings me to the question to talk a little bit about your journey of entering the pageantry. I it must have involved rigorous exercise routine, proper uh, dietary planning, and of course, as well as building your inner core, isn't it? Uh, can you sure. please tell us a little, about, a little bit about this process? Sure, preparing for pageant is not an easy feat, as you can imagine. It has to do with a lot of planning, a lot of visualization, a lot of really perfecting yourself to the point where you can believe that you deserve to win the title. So it yeah. really is about making yourself believe first, right? Once you convince yourself that you're worthy, that's when you can convince other people, like the judges, yeah. that you're worthy. Yeah. Yeah. And so it involved really, for me, it, it involved a lot of um, kind of writing down who is the ideal version of Natalie that will be worthy of this title. And then categorizing everything like nutrition, of course, and exercise yeah. and runway walking and interview skills, wardrobe and hair and makeup and all of those things. Yeah. So it was a very rigorous preparation, I would say for about six months. Uh, for my first try. I don't yes. know if you uh, saw that anywhere, yes, yes. that I actually yes. didn't win on my first try. Yeah, I know, and that we will go, to, we will get into it, because actually, in most of the pageants, uh, they had the history of winning the uh, local contest, and uh, the contest of the city and the country, and so forth. You started uh, basically uh, straight away while uh, with Miss Canada. Yes. Just yes. to, to enter this whole world, isn't it? Right, right. Uh, how, did you feel intimidated by others for uh, winning or going for Miss Canada? I wouldn't say I felt intimidated, but I definitely felt like I had some serious competition. Yeah. Because all the women who enter pageants, they're all beautiful, of course, as you can imagine. Yes. They're all talented. They're all confident. They all have a unique personality or some, some unique angle that they're bringing, their unique strengths that they're bringing to the pageant. So there were definitely a lot of contestants that I felt like, wow, these girls are just fantastic. They, they definitely deserve to be here. Yes. And I, de I believed in myself, but the first time that I competed for Miss Universe Canada, I think I was not owning myself. I was not owning my presence and I was not owning my authentic yes. self. Yes. Because I was kind of watching a lot of other pageants and I was trying to copy that the other pageant her, winners. Because, yes, yeah. of course, of course, yes. Yeah, so I think, well, now when I train contestants for other pageants, I always tell them, you can take inspiration and you can take some elements of other pageant yep. queens that you watched in the past but do not copy anybody because yes. a copy is never going to be as good as the original right yes. exactly so what was the environment like in a in the pageantry in terms of uh, energy between all of you girls? <laughs> you know what it was fantastic i think pageants get a bad reputation <laughs> for having cattiness and jealousy and sabotage but it wasn't anything like that. Most of the girls were really fantastic. They were friendly. They were supportive. Everybody wanted to do their best. And, but there, wasn't, there was a healthy competition. But mm -hmm. it wasn't like we were fighting or trying to sabotage each other. So for the most part, I still keep, <laughs> keep in touch with a lot of, with a lot of the fellow yes. contestants. Yeah. Well, mentally, I'm sure it, 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 you have a lot of immense, I should say, personal growth going through the pageantry, especially so quickly, because you definitely 
done that pretty much of a shortcut, even yeah. though uh, you won a third place, I believe, uh, in uh, for Miss Canada, right? In 2004. For the first time, on the yeah. first time so, I competed. Yes. Yeah. So why? Why? Was it, and you mentioned before that you had sort of uh, you didn't feel that you owned your personality. Why mm. do you think uh, it felt that way for you? Because I really watched too many other pageants and I tried to copy yeah. the other contestants copy. that I thought were yes. Yes. were the ones to beat. And yes. as I said, you can never try to copy somebody and then expect a really good result, right? Yeah. So authenticity really has to be there. And I know yes. everybody says that. It's almost like a cliche, be yourself, right? Everybody always yes. says that. Yes. Yes. What does that really mean? So to me, being authentic means that you know yourself really well, right? You know what makes you different, what makes you unique, what are your opinions on every possible subject. Yes. You know your flaws as well as your strengths. And then you stay present. You stay present and you allow your heart to speak. Because yes, whenever you get important. caught up in your mind, right, in your thoughts, that's when things yes. can go out of control. You might either blank yes. out or your thoughts might take you into, uh, <laughs> into a different area somewhere where you might end up talking about something completely different and you'll be thinking, yes. why did I say that? But when you yes. stay present, right, when you pay attention to what's happening around you and what is your heart whispering to you, that's when your authentic voice is going to come Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I... 100% agree with you. I strike for the same. And thank you for mentioning that. So you ran for the Miss Canada in 2005. And uh, what for the second made time. you really, for the second time? So you really, what made you to really do this again? You were certain you wanted to be yeah. a winner. Yeah. yeah. So my story, as you saw in the animated version, it really came down to that vision that I had built up in my head that one day, I wanted to leave that legacy and tell my grandkids that, gosh, you know, grandkids, your grandma competed at Miss Universe back in the day. Can you imagine? Yes. I didn't even have dreams of winning Miss Universe because I thought, you know, it's, if I win or if I don't win, it doesn't really matter. The fact that I'm even there competing is already yes. such an important part for my family's history. Because yes. being an immigrant was always kind of like a sore point for me yes. growing up. And being able to wear that Canada sash across my chest and say, I represent this country and yes. have the right to represent this country on the yes. world stage. It yes. felt like such a huge achievement to me already. Absolutely. So, so for me, that's what I was really after. Being able to walk across the stage with the sash, yes. wearing it across my chest and proudly yes. saying, yes. I'm Canadian, right? And yes. that's what made me go for the second time. Because I thought, you know what? There's nothing in the rules that says an immigrant cannot win yeah. this pageant. And so no matter what anybody says, because believe me, I heard the naysayers yeah. will tell me, don't even bother. Don't even, why are you wasting your time? Yeah. Don't go for something like this because they will never crown a Russian woman. Of course, exactly. And besides, yeah. you, were, you were educated, but yet you never worked. You, you never really, I, I believe, went for the nine to five job. You were in... Uh, you had different dreams and actually I can relate to it a little bit as well. I have <laughs> master's degree, but I, I never really worked or almost never worked from nine to five job because I was following my calling and uh, right. I quickly realized that this, that lifestyle of a mundane nine to five or corporate job was uh, office job was not for me. So I guess yeah, uh, it's, no, it's not uh, for everyone. And that's actually another one of the reasons that I wanted to really go for this title because I saw that as an opportunity for me to break out of the norm of what yeah. was expected of me. Because having graduated from university, my next step was going to be go and work for a company. Yeah. And I did. I actually, my first job out of university was a nine to five job to, at a, as an executive assistant to the president of a beer company. And okay. I hated that job. Well, I and hope you was, like beer. I, I know. <laughs> I yeah. don't drink. Well, not anymore, at least. But even beer, it was never really my thing. And I hated that job, really, because it, yeah. was, it was just not my style, right? I wanted to be out there experiencing life and doing things that I felt mattered to the world instead of yeah. answering phones and 
bringing mail to my boss, you know? Yes, yes. So uh, I just, I knew I was destined for much bigger than things bigger than that. And that's why Miss Universe was that opportunity for me. It was that yes. chance. So what was uh, the most from the pageantry experience that you love so much? Well, I suppose for the actual pageant experience, the best part is, of course, all the rehearsals that we get to do before the show. Mm -hmm. Because in those rehearsals, is what, that's when we have a lot of time to sit around and wait. And that's when you get to know the, your fellow contestants. That's yes. when you get to know all the girls and make friendships and bond and enjoy, you know, like little moments of um, back and forth, right? Kind of sharing experiences. Uh, I really remember fondly all of those hours that we sat on stage and behind the yes. stage practicing rehearsing and to me those are really the most memorable moments that's wonderful so you know uh, waiting as you said and being there for is waiting for other girls to uh, to rehearse i know that you kept a diary journal i also love to keep the journal do you still mm. keep it and what were the most essential things that you put uh, into a journal at that time. I'd be curious to know what you write in your journal too, oh. Olga. <laughs> do you do like a whole dear diary thing or do you just uh, write no, I lists? Record, I, I record my thoughts, my feelings, uh, um, my observations uh, and some of the things that I've learned or I want to learn. Uh, yeah. and no notes in a way that kind of uh, I can go back to and uh, proceed either with the help of those notes that I put in or research further. Mm. So, That's yes. good. In fact, I made a post a few months back about 11 things you can do with your journal. And if you yeah. go into my Instagram, you can scroll through maybe a little bit down and you'll see 11 things that you can do with your journal video. And I give some of these tips from my own journal. So I do yeah. so many things with it. One, I keep it on the side of my bed and I use it yes. as a dream journal. When I wake up, sometimes I have wonderful ideas. Yes. So I'll write those down. Otherwise, I'll put things like, you know, I'll, I'll write my bucket list of mm -hmm. all the amazing experiences that I want to do in, in this lifetime. I'll write yes, down my... Because it's yeah. visualizing. I do it yes. as well and it's fabulous. Yes. Yes. I'll write down things like my achievements for the year. So I have since 2018, or no, even 17, since my daughter was born. So maybe 2016, I started writing, what have I achieved at the end of the year? My top achievements of that year. And then also I will write my goals on my birthday because my birthday is in November. So I'll sit down and I'll start planning my goals for the next year. Yes. Um, what else? I write down the idea of my perfect day or I'll write down my goals for the day, right? What kind of wins do I want to have? Yes. I use it as a gratitude journal. So, you know, there's just yes. so, so many things that you can do with your journal. It's really of unlimited. Course. But I give 11 tips for you in, in the post. In my Fabulous. Instagram yeah, actually, it's, it's interesting. I will definitely look it up. I also wrote quite a bit about, in my captions as well, about uh, uh, keeping the journal. Um, did you write the most memorable, somebody even actually asked me the questions right now, your most memorable uh, moment of uh, pageantry? Was it the moment when you were announced as a Miss Universe or there was something uh, before that? Uh, to be honest, the moment of announcement is a blur. I don't remember even being there. <laughs> yes. My only memory of that moment is from what I've seen on TV or, yes. you know, on the recording. Yes. Because in that moment, I think it was just too much to handle. Yes. It was just too much information and too much yes. Yes. things happening at the same time that I think my mind really just blocked everything out. Yes. But throughout the reign, I was actually Miss Universe for one year and two months. So I had quite a long reign and I lived in New York City during that time. And I think the most memorable experiences there were just being in the city, you know, like arriving to the city and exploring it and learning how to live in New York City. And as you know, New York City oh, is not an easy, easy oh, place. <laughs> I, this is where I'm from. And that's why I said that from early days, we just learned how to hustle. And we, yeah. yeah, we just... 
embrace the energy of the city and move yeah move it's, it's a tough city to yeah. to get acquainted with yes. but once you do you know you fall in love right yes. and it's Absolutely. just it's something that you feel like wow the city has so much to offer and so yeah. i just remember arriving to the city for the first time and um you know getting to my apartment there because we lived with so miss universe miss usa and miss teen usa are all part of the same organization so right. the three girls would live together okay so we had some really wonderful times in that in that year just exploring the city going to wonderful events movie premieres yeah. red carpet events yeah it was just fantastic yeah. That's wonderful. And what uh, what did you envision, or what would you envision uh, for your life if you would have not become a Miss Universe? What would be your plan? Or I should, I don't want to call it as a plan B, but what would yeah. be your plan? Uh, what did you visualize for yourself? As we discussed, we do right. believe both of us in visualization. Yeah, you know, funny enough, because I I thought about this question. or somebody asked me that recently and when i thought about it i realized that no matter whether i won or i didn't win i probably would have ended up in the same place in the, in the same position as i am now doing what i'm passionate about yeah. because whether i am i won miss universe or not i think that passion for passing on the information empowering encouraging yeah. motivating people teaching people has always been in me and i realized yeah. that as my purpose just only maybe over three years ago and maybe i would have realized it a bit sooner if i wasn't derailed by the whole entertainment industry as miss universe but as miss universe i get of course so many wonderful opportunities to be a guest speaker and be invited to fantastic events and speak alongside my role models as well like jack canfield and joe vitali you know to yeah uh, but so maybe if i didn't win this universe i would have still been doing what i'm doing but maybe not on that same scale yes got it thank you for that <laughs> and of You're course right. and just looking at you and talking to it proves my point to say that in order to win the miss universe you of the girl obviously the pageant the winners have to possess this incredible intelligence and poise and handle demands of their life at that particular point What does the whole package mean for each candidate and does it vary from country to country to call from culture to culture or to miss universe finally Well what does it take I think it takes the kind of woman first of all I already mentioned that the kind of woman that believes deserves to have that title that she has no doubt in her mind that this is really for her because yeah. it's all at the end of the day it's a mental game winning a pageant it's winning the mental game yes. that's all i can tell everyone who's watching right now who's ever thought about entering a pageant so if you can have the strength of your mindset and the energy the strength of your energy to yeah. keep yes. maintain at that very very high level and you're going to be the last one standing who has that mental strength and that energy then you're going to be the winner yeah. so really it comes down to that aura to that charisma or magnetism whatever you want to call it but in my own words i call it the winning energy yeah right well that that's very interesting that you said that because uh, for my life as well and i'm very much on a, in a, always used to be before covid-19 <laughs> uh, with a crowd staging the events and being among so many different people um i feel that authenticity plays a very important part uh, and at least for me so can you please tell a little bit what do you think about authenticity yeah. in winning the pageant and yeah. uh, uh i always saw, you said the aura i always thought that and still believe and talk about it quite a bit uh, that body language just as important and sometimes even more important than verbal communication so sure. i would like to have your opinion about authenticity and uh, the body language and mannerisms Okay. In fact, one of the our viewers today, Yash, he's asking the same question too. Everyone always says just be yourself and be authentic, but no one tells you how to be authentic. Yes. yes. Well, in, in fact, my course, all of my courses are based on that. They're based on discovering yourself first, 
understanding yeah. who you are. And I already mentioned that earlier, but the more you know yourself, the more authentic you're going to be. So that means journaling, right? Actually yes, taking out a journal perfect. and writing down, how do I feel about this? What is this, this thing that I'm feeling right now? Because the more you can express yourself and understand your feelings, so working on your emotional intelligence, right? Because yes. emotional intelligence is what? Being able to understand how you feel and learn how to handle those feelings. So yeah. having a journal is wonderful for that because you'll be able to process your emotions. You'll be able to process your thoughts. Write down what you're feeling. Meditation is another wonderful way to start understanding who you are. Because when you're sitting alone and not distracting yourself every second by constantly being on your phone or watching TV or reading something, you're sitting with your feelings. Yeah. You're sitting with your emotions. That's when you start to understand, oh, ah, now I understand this is what, what I'm feeling and maybe why I'm feeling like that. So the more you start to understand yourself and how to deal with your own emotions, the easier it is going to be for you to express those feelings and emotions and communicate those emotions to other people. So journaling, meditation, being with yourself and just allowing that time to be alone. I mean, how often do we just sit there and do nothing? How often? Absolutely. Not yes. that often. Right? Absolutely. Yes. Very so good point. The more you can be with yourself, actually, the easier it is going to be to like yourself and understand yourself and be yes. more authentic. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, talking about, you know, I've always been fascinated with uh, rules of etiquette, and I feel that learning these rules, learning the proper manners, is fundamental task to embrace for all of us. Have you learned or did you have to learn a certain uh, set of rules uh, and etiquettes when you had to learn to be a part of, uh, was it a part of the training for the Miss Universe? You know, it actually wasn't. It wasn't part of that training that I received from my coaches or even once I won Miss Universe. The only coach that I had once I won was a personality coach who was teaching me how to express myself in a way that would be interesting, how to okay. showcase my personality. But as far as etiquette and mannerisms, I think I would have to thank my parents for that. <laughs> yes. Actually, yeah. I totally agree. It's, it's kind of, uh, it, it has to come from, uh, from the childhood. You have to learn yeah. as you live. And I, have, I, uh, I agree with that. What are the major takeaways from the whole experience for you? The takeaways, gosh, so many. I always say that one pageant equals to about three years of personal development courses. So I had definitely a few years there in the pageant industry. And so I felt that I had grown and developed so, so much. Um, but the biggest takeaway, you know, I was really touched and really something... There was like a pivotal moment I remember in my year when I traveled to South Africa and I got to experience, you know, the real world. I got to see the, the pandemics and the poverty and the, you know, the dire situations that people are living in in other countries. Because being sheltered in Canada from all of that, you know, sadness and grief yes, that's happening yeah. around the world... It was a huge eye-opening experience for me. Yeah. So my first trip as Miss Universe, my first international trip was to South Africa. And we traveled around the whole region there, including Swaziland, which is like a very, very tiny little yes, country, yes. very poor little yes. country. Yes. And we got to you know, meet people who are dying in hospices. I got to meet children who are born with AIDS. I got to meet teenagers who were infected with HIV as well, who... Yes. Not because they did something bad or wrong, but because yes. they were at the wrong place at the wrong time or because they didn't know, they didn't have any knowledge how to protect themselves. Yes. And so a lot of these things really opened my eyes to the global suffering that is happening. And it shook me to my core. I will, I will yes. tell you something. I cried. I remember there were several yes. times that I just cried myself to sleep because I couldn't even deal with it. Yes. But it was an important part of my maturity and growing up because I had yes. to learn it at some point. And of course, as Miss Universe, that was my job as well, to bring that awareness and yes. break down the stigma associated with this pandemic and this is disease. And so that taught me a lot. 
not only for myself and my personal life, but being able to share that on a public yes. platform. Yes. Right? Let's talk about sharing. Uh, you an author of uh, two bestsellers. Two, uh, and can you please share the common philosophy behind both of your books? Mm -hmm. Well, the common philosophy behind both books is that mindset is everything, really. If you want to live a healthy and happy and beautiful life, you better start with your mindset. Yeah. And if you want to be a winner in life, you better start with your mindset. Yes. So both books really are, are centered about how to change your perspective, how to be more grateful, how to develop the qualities that all winners have, and just how to, you know, on a daily basis to look at your life and motivate yourself. So you don't really need anybody else to motivate you. You can yeah, find it within I, yourself, right? Yes. Everyone has that capacity to be self-motivated. Yes, so, I, I very much agree. With you. Yeah, yes. so that's I do it all much... the time. I motivate myself. <laughs> so how do you do it? I, just like you, I motivate myself. I visualize. I have a drive uh, to move forward. And I believe in uh, activities. And I believe in... I don't uh, accept... Uh, uh, being passive in general and feeling so sorry for myself and uh, playing a victim. Uh, I just, uh, I also learned, you know, I've been in the, in the lifestyle e events business for about 24 years and I stopped stressing because I realized whether you stress or you don't stress, you still have to do your job and you do your job well. So why bother stressing? So I oh, diverse my, I diverse my, uh, thoughts and my mental state into something more positive. And I also learned how to live at the moment, uh, in the moment, I should say. And it's not wow. easy all the time, but uh, I'm doing my best. I'm still learning, like all of us. We're all learning, but I got to say, Olga, you yeah. are a winner. You're so successful. You've got, you're such a go-getter. You're such a proactive yeah. person. It's so lovely to see a woman who is following her dreams, not taking no for an answer, and just living her best life. Congratulations on everything. Thank you. Just, just like you, I think, I think our life and the, the way we've had our childhood and upbringing really, really probably plays a major part in it. I, 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 I think, I, I believe. So I just, you know. Yeah, and you know, I, I always say to all of my students, whatever your background, whatever is your life story, use that as yeah. yes. fuel. Yes. As fuel, because you never know who is in somebody who's in the same position as you, who is looking up to you. And yeah. if you use that pain yes. and suffering and difficulties and challenges, actually use them as kind of a way to almost feel like, oh, wow, this is the path of the champion. I'm walking that path of the winner because no one gets to the top without some challenges and obstacles that actually wouldn't be inspiring or worth reading about. Well, and it would, wouldn't be authentic either. So, you know, just... Yeah, well, it would be boring. Nobody wants to hear yeah. about a person who just was born with a silver spoon in their mouth, yeah. got everything given yeah. to them, and then they became a millionaire. I mean, yeah. who would want to read a story about that? We yeah, all want to absolutely. hear the story of the Oprahs of the world and the Nelson Mandelas of the world, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so your personal empowerment book leads me uh, to mention your program that has a goal to empower women all around the world, especially the younger generations. Can you please tell us a little bit about your, well, about the book, but about yes. the program? Yes. After having written that book, I am winning, I decided to turn that into a series of courses on how everybody can be winning in life and in love. And of course, in pageants as well, since that's kind of yes. like my claim to fame. <laughs> so I started a series of courses, uh, online masterclasses, and I'm helping women and some men also. I have most, of course, most of my clientele are women, but I do have some men as well who want to take control of their lives, change their perspective on how they look at their own life and yes. take charge of their own destiny. So whether it is that they're looking for that perfect partner, right? Yes. The perfect relationship yes. that their ideal mate, I can help with that in my win and love course. Yes. If they're looking to succeed in their career or in any project or any part of their life, I have a win in life 
a masterclass as well. And of course, for all of those young women who are buying for the title of Miss Universe or any other pageant that they have their eyes on, I have the Win the Crown masterclass, which is very, very popular. And it's, we've had some success stories already. I have already three years in a row, my girls are winning the Miss Universe Canada title. And Fantastic. doing really well on the international scale as well. I can only imagine how proud you must feel. It's oh, wonderful. Do you so think there proud. is a change? Of course. Do you think there is a change in the program and lessons you teach from when you have started the program and uh, have written a second book? Uh, mm -hmm. And our days, especially during the pandemic, during the COVID times. Well, you know, I think we all have grown so much during this pandemic time. And yes. the, dif yes. the difficult times really is yes. our best teacher, right? Yes. So I definitely have grown. And especially in my spiritual journey, I have deepened my understanding of the energetical world. I have, you know, started participating in more meditation ceremonies and yoga um, I have done some plant ceremonies. I have, um, you know, done some shamanic rituals and things like that. But also, I have even gotten interested in quantum physics. So everything has kind of started to come together. And it gave me a deeper understanding of how the world works. And I yeah. started incorporating a lot of this stuff into my, my courses, into what I teach. Fantastic. So, my book I am winning, my second book, is actually very practical. It's not very spiritual at all. But I have a feeling that the third book that I write, the next one that you're I'm going there. to publish, is going to be very spiritual. Yeah, well, you've grown probably, you've, you've matured emotionally, I'm sure. Yes. Talking about that, uh, I would like to know your thoughts on social media. How do you think it affects young generations? And I feel that there is a tremendous pressure and unhealthy sometimes competition uh, that social media can cause uh, to a person that and it actually could be much more dangerous rather than beneficial unless we know how to learn and uh, unless we are in touch with our own selves and uh, we have our own values and strong right. values. What do right. you think? Yeah, social media can be such a wonderful tool in so many different aspects of our lives. But if we get the guidance on how to use it properly, and that's yes. why... Courses like mine and, you know, role model like yourselves yeah. and other, other people who are out there inspiring and empowering the youth of today, there needs to be more of those available to the young yes. people who are yeah. using social media right now. Because used in the wrong way, it can be very dangerous. It can be very Absolutely. destructive, right? Yes. So very we need... Emotionally yeah. drinking as well. Yes. yes, that's right. That's why more books need to be written on that subject these um it needs to be even taught in schools how to use social media properly and how to handle you know yes. things like from comparisons to you know cyber bullying to etiquette as well there should be some social Absolutely. media etiquette as well yes. so as we move more and more into this digital world there needs to be more support for the youth how to handle social media. I, I absolutely believe. I think I, I agree with you because I think the etiquette of social media and, uh, is definitely lacking in a lot of posts and a lot of, uh, yes. Um, and and how to handle around. this this comparison syndrome, yes. right? This Because we are all, not, none of us are immune to it, right? No matter yes. how high we have risen, there's always going to be somebody who's doing something better or more yes. or has more yes. followers or yes. has more likes, right? So we need to check in with ourselves. Yes. Okay, how does that make me feel? And yes. is that even an important thing that I need to worry about, right? So we need to be very self-aware of how certain social media po posts make us feel. And that's why, again, journaling, come, we keep coming back to that, but that's a wonderful yes. tool to use to say, okay, I looked at my social media today and I saw this one girl who had 12 million followers and, you know, she's so beautiful and she's always wearing designer clothes. And I must admit, I felt a little bit insecure. Intimidated. Yeah. Write it down. Yeah. That's okay. Don't yes. bury your feelings. You don't have yes. to, you know, puff up your ego and say, no, it doesn't bother me. If it bothers yes. you, go ahead, feel that feeling, write it down yeah. and then analyze it analyze what does that mean to you 
right? Yes. And that and all, one, it's also, once again, it implies authenticity. If you are not authentic to your own self, whatever you express on the social media, eventually it will be visible. So yeah. I think authenticity is very important. I would like to, so going back, sort of social media takes a lot of time, time out of probably most of our lives. What is your daily routine and whether you establish a certain routine while you're preparing for Miss Universe and whether you keep this routine? Yeah, I have lots of uh, tips for everyone about my how to win the day, especially how to win the morning. In fact, for all of you who are watching today, I have a gift for everyone. So if you go onto my website, you'll be able to download a copy, a free ebook of Win the Day. Five steps, five steps to win your day. And you'll be able to see what are the kind of things that I do and what are some of the winners and some of the top performers and successful people do. But they all have a morning routine. You know, that's, that's a must. If you wake up in the morning, create your, for yourself a nice little easy routine that you can stick to consistently every single day, let's say for a period of a month, or so, just so that you can solidify that routine. Yeah. But it needs to be something very easy and simple, something that you cannot just say, oh, it's, this is too difficult. But make that routine, like wake up at a certain time, make the bed, go take a cool shower, or like I do like a contrasting shower after my warm, yes. hot shower, I turn the water on the coldest it's setting and I blast myself, yeah. yeah. And it wakes yeah. you up, it makes you energized, and it yeah. makes you feel positive as well. It, it gives you like a sense of aliveness. You know, then you can do things like a little journaling or a little breath work or meditation. So these things, they help me so much, especially now. I didn't know these things when I was competing in the pageants, but now I incorporate it into my teaching and into the pageant preparation for all of my clients. Uh, breath work and meditation is part of my uh, curriculum. <laughs> That's wonderful. So I, you know, by obviously learning this about you and listening to you. Uh, I definitely feel that you know how to, how the successful people need to have the alliance between as, uh, the body and the, the physical exercises and mental uh, health, isn't it? So there mm -hmm. is, should be a strong correlation between body and mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think it is? Absolutely. Well, research has already proven to us that whenever we exercise, we flood our brain with serotonin and there's oxytocin and all kinds of endorphins, right? Yes. So it's already proven that, yes, we do feel mentally more positive, we feel stronger, we feel resilient when we exercise. Um, but on an energetical level, you can also look at it from an energetical perspective where energy needs to move. If we don't move yes. our bodies, yes. energy will stagnate. And yes. we need to keep that energy flowing. Otherwise, there's no life. If there's no movement, there's no life. Do you feel that at present time, the relationships uh, between a uh, behavior, between people shifted? Uh, do you see that there is a, uh, less uh, authenticity, be perhaps, or more artificial behavior in the relationships between people? In between just uh, friends or people on between, social media? Yes, yes, due to the present time, yes. Between mm. among friends and among acquaintances and people whom you meet. I haven't noticed that there has been a decline in, in authenticity or some kind of... No, I haven't really noticed that. I think it's always been the same. But maybe now it's more visible because... Well, well, due to social media, I think... Now we can hide behind the, you know, handle or screen name. And we can say things that our ego believes or our yeah. egos want us to make us feel better. So we can say yeah. things that normally we wouldn't say. Right? Yes. And I think that has a lot to do with it. But other than that, I think in person, mm, I don't believe that it has changed that much. Do you? Uh, I feel that... Uh... I feel that people become a little bit more um, compassionate, I would say, to one another during the COVID-19. I feel that people start to gravitate to the people who, to the more meaningful relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, subtract the social media part. I'm saying the authenticity of the physical uh, mm. 
touch and physical energy between people. I feel that definitely people gravitate to more of a warmth from one another and they want to be these people who give them this energy and, and whom they can share this energy as well and in, in a very pure, more authentic way. Right, That's my right. personal perception. Uh, you know, and yeah, I can, cultural, I can see that. Uh, talking about culture, you know, you grew up and you lived and you've been raised in so many different places, different cultures, and uh, what what is the cross cultural difference as well as the uni, uni, universal similarities that you've observed uh, living, being born in Russia, mm. coming to Canada, uh, and then now living in Thailand for so long and traveling the world? Mm -hmm. Traveling, I think, opens you up to the idea that we are, are all much more similar than we are different. Yeah. Because I when agree. you start to live in different countries, you realize that people really just want the same things. They just want to be healthy. They want their families to be protected and safe and healthy as well. They want to have peace and joy, right? So yes. across all nations and cultures, I've observed that people are very simple and they... The, only three important things is peace, love, and joy. <laughs> right? yeah. That's what everybody yes. really wants. Even you know, taking religion into account, every religion at the base of it all, at the, yeah. um, at the source of it all, really teaches that kind of peace, love, and joy. Uh, right? Do you teach these this things to your daughter, Maya? Absolutely. We have, we have started teaching her you know, already about you know, for example, if she has like a bad day and she starts to cry and get annoyed and, you know, get um, have like a tantrum or something like that, we, we teach her that she's in charge of how she feels. Nobody yeah. made her angry. She's the one who allowed herself to become angry. And so we say, let's start the day with positive vibration, yes. with high vibration, yes. Yes. you know, because yes. the more you are vibrating on that high frequency by emitting that love, joy, and peace, the more you're going to attract of the goodness yes. of the same things into yes. your life. Yes. And so, so we are teaching her already. I, I don't know if she understands the concept yet, but, but she will. Eventually, it'll all click. Feel us. Exactly. Yeah. And do you feel, do you think that the heritage and uh, uh, plays an important role? Uh, do you have any... Um, very strong heritage lessons that you bring it over from your family to you to Maya and especially being yeah, born in Russia for sure for sure I think anybody who was born in the Tradition. former Soviet Union carries quite a lot of that um, generational trauma I think and the yeah. more we work on ourselves to heal our, ourselves of all the anger the resentments, the guilt, or whatever comes along with that trauma, then we're healing ourselves and the future generations and even the past generations too. So we're healing that, that trauma across the board for all the generations. So we need, to, yeah, we need to work on ourselves every yes. single day, every single yes. day. And, and super think, sensitive, super yeah. sensitive, super emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it comes, I'm sure it comes from it heritage. Comes. It comes, yeah. for sure. I think that all the cultures and all the heritages, they have, their, they have had their fair share of suffering, yes. right? Yes. Um, yes, of but course. I think the Soviet Union particularly has been very, very difficult for people to, uh, I guess, they, they've had a hard life, <laughs> let's just yeah. say. Uh, absolutely. But nevertheless, you know, you just like me, we were brought up with a lot of the cultural education. Uh, we, it was a pastime for me to go to the museums and opera and ballet and theater. That's what we did during the weekends and during uh, mm. holidays, isn't it? Yeah. Do you feel that uh, the cultural education uh, is uh, very important for the children to grow up and uh, we need to enhance it as much as uh, yeah. possible? I think it is, but there needs to be a balance between the cultural element and then the nature element. And that's why we moved actually from the big city of Bangkok to Phuket, which is an island. Yes. We want our daughter Maya to grow up surrounded by as much nature as possible so that she yes. gets connected to it. I really don't want her yes. to lose that connection. But at the same time, 
I know when I came at 13, I came to Toronto, which is a big city, and I came from a small town in Russia. It was such a wonderful experience growing up as a teenager in a big city and being exposed to all the wonderful cultural yeah. elements and the people from around the world. So it made me very, you know, worldly and educated. Of course. Um, yeah. And so I think there definitely needs to be a balance between both. So if you are raising your kids, there should be some cultural elements to that bringing and definitely some nature. Absolutely. When, when I will come to Phuket, you are going to take me on a nature walk with Maya. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll go to the beach. We'll go to the yes. waterfall. Yes. I love Please. Phuket. I, oh, my gosh. I've been there so many times and uh, I'm looking forward and I was actually so happy when we heard that now Phuket, that you can travel uh, well, it actually wasn't that easy at the end of the day, but uh, I'm hoping that, that the borders will open and uh, yeah, Phuket sandbox is in effect. So yeah. if you if you are vaccinated, you can definitely yeah. come and hang around the Absolutely. island without any lockdown. Yes, so. yes, yes, yes. We'll definitely make a day just like you. You should come and visit me in Singapore. It's so close. Very soon. <laughs> For sure. uh, well, thank you. Really, please uh, come. Natalie, Absolutely. Well, I, we, we've spoken for an hour and it seems like we just started. Okay? It went just like so that. We, Five we, minutes. Just like that. So perhaps, <laughs> yes, perhaps one day we'll have another second session uh, uh, with you again. And I would, I would love, love that. To, Please keep in touch. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Natalie, for talking to me and for sharing thank your you. incredible insights and enchanting stories. And uh, Please, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. Please look at Natalie's website and the register for her courses and order her book. Her website is natalieglibova.com and follow her on, Insta on Instagram as well. And this episode will be recorded on my IGTV and I will post it on the uh, site and the, the conversations as well as on the YouTube. And all my episodes, I have 22 up to now, uh, are recorded and are available for your viewing and listening. I have uh, <laughs> amazing people, as you can see, and uh, more to come. So stay tuned and thank yes. you so much again. Thanks to and you, have Olga. Have a wonderful also. time in France and enjoy it. And we will. We still and have. Breathe. Yeah, How we many? still have one month to go. We're going to be here wonderful. in France and a little bit of Italy. But I got to say, I miss Phuket. I miss home so much. I have one, my neighbor and really good friend, Teresa, <laughs> who's joining us here today, Jolly Mummy, and Lizaveta, who's always so nice to comment on every single live that That's we do. Wonderful. Thank you to everyone who tuned in. Lots of love. Lots of love. And I will talk to you soon and we'll exchange the messages while you're on holidays as well. And have a wonderful well, time and keep safe. Sure. Love, peace, and joy. That's right. <laughs> yes. Keep on winning. Right. Big love. Thank you. Take care.